Okay, gamers, how you doing? It is a Tuesday afternoon, so back by popular demand, we have uh, Unity Coding, and today we're going to be starting a very exciting project with Seaborn, or Mr. Sugar Meep, or Mr. Seaborn, or whatever you're going by, Seaborn. <laughs> um, so we're going to be starting, I believe, uh, a 2D weather balloon program. Is this true? Uh, yeah, uh, that that's what we're doing today. Outstanding. So um, I'll pass it over to you. And while while you're doing that, let me just give a little bit of background of why we're doing the weather balloon. So why I say we've been launching these for a few years now. These are balloons fitted with Raspberry Pi technology. Very similar to this little Raspberry Pi here, and it's got sensors, right? And we're very interested in, in knowing how humans in urban landscapes are influencing weather and climate patterns in the high altitude environments. So this is 150,000 feet above Earth. It's pretty, pretty cool stuff. And I'll post a link of the video and, and some images of previous launches. So what I thought would be really cool to do is to do a, a 2D animation using Unity showing all the physics that's involved with the weather balloon launch. So I know Seaborn, you've been busy trying to get the prototype together and then I, I guess you're gonna show that and then we can sort of go step by step through through this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, let me set up the prototype thing right now. Very good. So let's just take a second. Do I share my screen? Sure thing. Go for it. Okay. All right, so here is our prototype thing of the weather balloon. You have your little balloon, and I didn't really know what to put for cargo, so I just put a camera, because I know it's got a camera on it. And then it will rise up through the sky and eventually get to a space area. I left the clouds in all the way. I, I should remove the top, more top ones. But you can see it'll go up, and you have a little map at the bottom right where you can see where it is and it'll go up, you can pause it and resume it. And then there'll be wind, rain, stuff like that. And you can move the camera just to see where it is. So, really cool. see it right here. And, if it, and it'll just keep going higher. So all it does right now is go up. Okay. Well, this is, this is great, but there is wind and things built into this and it looks like you've, you've made some clouds and you've got different layers of the atmosphere, the troposphere and the stratosphere. So, yeah, you know, there's still quite a bit of detail in here already. So, so why don't you start by showing us like, how did you start doing this and we'll see how far we get. Okay. Like, uh, so do I just start a new, yeah, do I start the new thing? Okay, and is anyone going to follow along with it or am I just going to kind of show how it works? I think you're going to go and show how it works. Okay, so I'll just put in a new project here, 2D. Um, I'll just call it weather balloon um, YSA 2D there. So this will load and it'll take a second. And we're starting with a 2D version. Yeah, so yeah. easiest to sort of do. And then from there, you can sort of build it out into a 3D version. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, it would definitely be for this easier to start in 2D. Great. And this program here is available at unity.com, correct? Yeah, unity.com, it's free. Um, that's a really good program. And then we have all the art stuff that you need for 2D or 3D. I think Rob put that somewhere on the website. So you okay. can look at that as well. Right. That's with Blender? Yeah, Blender. Yeah, Blender for 3D. And then I just use that pixel art website for 2D. But you can really use whatever you want for right. either. Blender is recommended for 3D because it, it's free and it's one of the best programs that there is for any 3D modeling, really. 
Yeah, so. if you go to the virtual experiences section of the website under where we've got your recordings, um, you'll see the icons. You just click on the icons, it'll take you straight to the website. Yeah. Okay, so we just started a new project. You'll see it's pretty empty, just a bunch of boxes. You can see the stuff in your scene right now, just a camera. And then you can see uh, what assets you have in here. This little white box is what the camera can see. And so right now, if you go into what it'll look like when you start, it'll just be this grayish kind of thing. So, um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, to add stuff, you can just right click here. And if you wanna, if you want, you can make this bigger, smaller, or change the layout completely. Like move this here, all that kind of stuff. So you can kind of customize the layout any way you want, but what we'll do is we'll go right click on the side, go 2D objects out of Sprite, and then give it, um, I'm trying to get the thing, the zoom thing out of the way. Um, we'll just give it one of the default Unity sprites, and then size it up to, okay, size it up to 10 by 10. So you can see we have this little box in here. And then this, I guess, could be the weather balloons cargo, or actually we'll make this the floor. Okay. So we'll just drag it out and you're not gonna see how ugly it is. Does, a sprite is just an object. Yeah. Actually, this is kind of ugly. So I'm gonna, it's, it gets blurry when you get it too big. So I'm gonna go import new asset and I will use, I have one of them in here. I think it's, I'm just gonna import couple of these see if those are what I want no that's the panda um, I can't it doesn't want to show up so I'm just gonna I know one of these is what I want we'll just use this box perfect so 1,000 by 1,000 put it there and then make it so it can collide with other things by we'll give it a uh, a box collider 2D. So you can see that green box around it that show that shows where it will collide with other objects. Right. So if I wanted, I now I can add, let's say, I don't know. let's make this uh, 50 by 50. So we have another box here we can give this a box collider. We'll also give it a thing, a rigid body, which will give it gravity and physics. So now when you start, you'll see it'll fall down and hit that. So and Simon, you could create 50 of these little payload boxes, right? And then yeah. you assign them the collider 2D attribute to that yeah. box. So every time that it collides with something else that has that 2D attribute, it's not going to go past it, right? It's going to think that it's a collision. Yeah, so we can add a bunch of them in there and they'll all kind of do that. It's kind of hard to see without borders, but I give them, let me give them all. No, um, give them all that sprite and make them 10. By 10. So now you can actually uh, tell them apart and you'll see that they'll all kind of fall down here my, the zooms thing keeps getting in the way um that's pretty cool though yeah there let me see if i can give one of them let's remove all these other ones but oh okay so our issue was that when I changed the sprite, the box collider was still this big. So I'm just gonna give it a new one. It'll auto automatically define them. We can duplicate this and put it here, then duplicate these two like that, and add a bunch of them. You'll see they, they'll interact with each other, kind of like that. <laughs> That's wonderful. And so, you can go into your scene view 
and just kind of move it around. You can make like a little tower of them. Let's see if I can stack all of them. But this is like how the scene view kind of thing works. And yeah, so th that's uh, Unity's built-in physics engine. And if we wanted, they all have a bunch of different attributes to them. Let me go back there. So they all have, uh, under physics, they have a bunch of attributes, mass, drag, gravity scale, or collision modes, and all that kind of stuff. So I could give him a negative gravity scale, and then it would just start floating up like that. So that's what I did um, for the weather balloon. What I did is I got, we'll say that this is our cargo. We'll give it a gravity scale of one, a mass of one. And then our actual balloon, we'll make, this will be our balloon. We'll give it this circle and then do 10 by 10. Then we can give it um, a circle collider, a rigid body, and we can put the gravity to negative one. And then to connect these, what, what you would normally do to connect something like this is I would just drag this under here and it would just copy the same position as this. But for this sense, it kind of uh, swings. I'm gonna add a joint. Uh, I'm, and it's gonna be a hinge joint and we'll put it right, we'll edit the joint, put it right here, and then drag in our circle. And now we should see that they will be connected. I don't know, my, my circle disappeared when I did that. Let's see what happened there. Yeah, so you can see it here. It, it disappeared for some reason but it'll, it'll connect with this thing and swing around it. That's brilliant. And now it's going up, but uh, yeah, that's, that's what I use to make, the, um, to make the weather balloon thing. I think what's happening is a lot of times when you can't see a sprite in 2D, it's because they've gone ahead of the camera. Camera's right here. So you just have to drag it. Yeah, we have to drag it back into the actual scene. Yeah, so now you can see it there. And then if we wanna make this thing float, we can give it like negative 10 and it'll just shoot up really fast. That's cool. So uh, the point you are making there about the cameras is that these things are essentially in layers. And so yeah. because we're, we're doing this initial one in 2D, but they just sort of need to be within the, the thickness of that layer that you're trying to project. Is that right? Yeah. A lot of times um, what happens is unity was initial uh, was first meant for 3d games. So a lot of the 2d tools are just 3d tools, but you have to kind of configure them to work in 2d. Gotcha. So that, that kind of causes some issues with um, them clipping through the cameras and stuff but it's normally not that hard to fix. So could you um, just walk through the physics? Um, yeah. Parameters again? So wait, the physics, what? Like the list of the list of all the physics. The oh yeah. There. So we can add, um, uh, dynamic, dynamic, kinematic and static dynamic means that, um, the, you can move this item using forces and then kinematic means you move it just you just change the position which means dynamic is for physics stuff but kinematic is if you just want something to move perfectly in a certain way without without being able to interact with it, other stuff and then i'm not really sure what static is i I'd, I'd say it just stays completely still then material you can actually make i can do create then physics material 2d uh let's call this bounce and we'll give it a bounciness of one. You can change the friction and bounciness here. And then we'll give it to this and give it the bounce friction material. Let's just uh, remove this little hinge joint. And we'll drag this here. 
and give it a gravity scale of one. So you'll see that now when it hits it, it'll bounce. Ha, oh, that's, that's neat. What, and then, what about pressure? Can you pressure? Yeah. That's um, the, is there like a pressure? Let me think. I'm pretty sure it's called an, like an area effector. Yeah. That yeah area effector 2D. And then you need to have a, you need a collider and then do use by effector. And there's forces here that you can do. Um, this is how you do wind zones in 2D. And for 3D, there are wind zones. There are no 2D wind zones, but you can get turbulence, uh, pulses, stuff like that for the wind zones. But for this, you can, you can definitely code in stuff to simulate pressure. But this is about the best you have for 2D. So let's say I'm going to go here and make this affect everything. And we should see a wind effect. Yeah, it was too powerful. So everything. That was a hurricane. Not one. Yeah, way too powerful. Um, we can turn this down a bit. Let's turn it to like 0 0.6 and then. Nope, still too powerful. Um, yeah, <laughs> the wind is a bit difficult, but so should I start? Actually, should I, what should I do next? Like, yeah, just continue to build this. Yeah. And okay. I'm with questions, and if others have questions too. They can. Okay, so let's do. Let's connect these two, and then I'll do cameras. I have to reconnect these though. Um, let's give it a hinge joint here, then that's right there. And now we have that back, but, and also let's remove the bounce from our balloon and give it negative two gravity scale. So now we'll be able to see this actually we'll be able to see it work correctly again. And, but it just goes off and disappears. So the view that we see is from this thing, the camera, which is right here. It goes straight in a rectangle all the way down into infinity. And so we can see this. So we want it to move the same way that the balloon does just up. So what we can do here, there's a couple things we can do. We can, we can, the lazy way that you can do this is that I can just go main camera, put it under the balloon, and then it'll do this. It'll follow it, but it'll also follow the rotation of the balloon, which will look really ugly. So what we'll want to do is we'll want to give it a script. So we'll just call it this camera controller and we'll add that and what is a script Subo? uh the scripts are kind of how you control all the assets if you want to if you can't use tools to control it you can control it using the actual coding so i'll open that i'll just do edit script it'll open in visual studio and this is using c sharp um It'll start you off with a little basic thing here. It'll say using system collection, system collection generic. I think that is for, I don't know what these are for, but you can normally just delete them at the start. It's for more stuff when you're actually publishing the game you need it. But then public class camera controller, this sh tells us that um, this script that I'm editing right now is this same camera controller script. And then avoid start, this will happen before the first frame updates. And then the update is called once per frame, which it says right there. So we can go ahead and remove the start function. And so we're gonna want our camera to do two things. We need it to follow the Y position of our balloon. And then we also, we don't want it to follow the X position. We'll wanna be able to move that ourselves so you can see how wind affects it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add um, a public float 
feed, which uh, public means that if I save this here, public means that I can edit this right here. I can go like that and give it the camera's movement speed, any speed I want. I'm just going to set this to 0 0.2. Then a float is a type of variable. There are four main types of variables. A float is any number like decimal, negative, all that stuff. And that is what, that's what we're using for the speed. So let me just find script. Yeah. Then we're also going to need a public trans. How do I? Okay. Transform balloon. So we, we want to follow the balloon. Transform is up here. It's position, rotation, and scale. So we're going to go to our main camera. And that should, if I save it here, it will show up right here, balloon, and we'll just drag in our balloon. And now our script, our camera script now knows where the balloon is. And so we can go now to update and do, to make this follow the balloon's Y position and go upward, we're going to do transform trans wait form dot position so that's going to show um oops press no okay it's a key that i press okay so this is going to show transform dot position means the trans the position of our camera and then we'll do equals a new uh, vector three, which means a set of three numbers, X, Y, and Z position here. Um, and then we'll set, so our, we want our camera's trans, our camera's position to be the exact same. It, we want it to stay the same, except make the Y the same as the balloon. So we'll do for the X, we do transform dot position dot x then for the y we want it to be the same as the balloon we do transform dot posi position wait let me just see no it's balloon dot position so the dots here like trans first of all syntax is very important right so initially yeah. if you wrote public transform balloon but it was a lowercase t for transform it wouldn't recognize it correct no yeah for transform the t is only capitalized when you make a new variable of it gotcha and then otherwise it's not going to be capital right and then um where you've got like transform dot position dot x you're basically calling different subclasses from within a, like a class a, a library, a module that you've that you're using. Correct? Yeah. In this case, you that that's the using Unity engine up here. Right. So in in Python, this would be like a, a module import. Yeah. So we have this. It'll set our balloons. I mean, our camera's position to its x position is the same. It's the balloon for the y position and the z position is the same. What I could have done here that I didn't realize earlier is made this a vector two because this is 2D. I only need the X and Y, but now it'll follow the balloon as it goes up. So now we want it to be able to move the camera left and right. So we're going to do um, go here and do an if statement. So an if statement is if this, like if speed equals one then move right something like that so we'll do if um if input so the input module how that works is uh well, what we'd have to do is input dot key code no input dot get key this would be taking our controller keyboard input and turning it into an actual usable thing. Um, if input dot get key, and then, wait, get, no, I don't know what this is, but it always happens where I press some button that messes up 
how this works. So input dot get key, then we go to the key code function, key code dot right arrow. So this is detecting whether or not the right arrow is being pressed. And if it is being pressed, we're gonna want to do um, another, you can just copy this, transform dot position, put it here. It's gonna change our position and make our camera go to the right. So we're gonna be adding a value to the X of our camera transform. So what we're gonna do here is transform dot position equals new. Let me see if I can modify this and make it work a little bit better. New vector, we'll try a vector two because we don't really need a vector three because this is 2D. So new vector two transform form dot pos position dot wait trans wait no transform has an s transform dot position also has an s s transform dot position dot x plus speed so that's gonna add speed to our when the right arrow is being pressed it's gonna add our value of speed which is point two to the camera's transform. And we'll also just keep this, for the Y position, we're just gonna keep this here. And that's the speed there is the variable that's defined above, which is linked to the speed in Unity's platform, correct? Um, no, that's just what we're calling it. Okay. Yeah, so we're just gonna call the actual variable, we're gonna call, this is just a number that we're using so we can edit it in the actual unity itself without having to go back to the code every time And then we just copied that um, And then changed it for left arrow and then did minus speed and So now we should be able to see the oh I spelled transform wrong somewhere uh, so syntax is important. Yeah, it'll tell you right here in the console where you messed it up. Uh, T-R-A, okay, yeah. So in these I spelt it transform, form, transform, transform, save that. Now we should be able to go here and do fast. Um, <laughs> We, I put the speed too high, so we're gonna have to wait till my zoom thing wants to work. I'm gonna drag this here so we can see how the camera moves. Yeah, so now the camera's just gone. Wait, no it's not. Oh, it was the vector two. So using a vector two ended up messing up the whole thing. So I, shouldn't, I should've just stuck to what I was gonna do originally. So, and because you're changing that to vector three again, you have to put in the, the Z position. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to be looking for it, but it's not there. Yeah. So now we should be able to see that now we can move left and right using the, well, I'm using the arrow keys. You can't see that, but that, that's what's going on. So okay. you'll see right here, the camera is the white box right there and you'll be able to see it moves left and right as it goes up with the balloon. That's very neat. Could you, um, could you go back to the visual, the, the code again, the visual basic code? Yeah, let me just go, I'm gonna make it so you can actually see it move. Okay. I'm just gonna grab, actually I don't like this texture. I'm gonna grab this rock texture, make it a 10 by 10, then, so when you import a pixel art, you have to change it to 32 bits so it recognizes it as one. Um, I'll turn it to draw mode, tiled, then give it a height of like 10. So now we have this 
to show it moving upward. So now we can see that it will, you can tell that it's moving upward now. So, that's, yeah, so. That's awesome. Sure. I had a question um, for you, yeah. like a general coding question. So the if statements there is, is basically logic, right? You're, you're presenting different scenarios. Uh, yeah. How often are you using logic like that with coding? Um, that is pretty much all coding, just logic stuff, if, else, or stuff like that. And not all those logic functions is pretty much all of coding. So. Very good. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, now we have it just going up. Now we have a working camera. And so now let's say we want to add like a, a pause button or something to, uh, so we can pause resume. So what we would do is we would go right click, add, click UI, add um, button. So now you'll see it comes up with this huge new camera and adds a little button here that says button. And you'll see that it'll say that in the bottom right there. So we can make this button look a bit better. We'll give it, um, instead of using the UI sprite, we're gonna just give it a, I can give it, no, that's a bad border. Um, I'll just give it that block. And then I don't like the font that it uses really. It's kind of blurry and doesn't look that good. So if I want, I can go get new fonts at this place at the asset store. It's gonna take a second to load. But so the asset store is where they sell all kinds of um, post their own assets here. And if you see, wait a second, it's going to take a minute. There's like all kinds of sound effects, um, UIs, bot, like different animation packs, all that kind of stuff. A lot of them are free, but a lot of them you have to pay for. There's characters, all that stuff that people sell in here. So we're just gonna go for uh, font, fonts, and see if we can find anything. I like the this pixel font. There's a bunch of them that we can get. Yeah, a lot of them. Font. It looks like good. Forty-five dollars like for a font. Some right. of them are really expensive. I'm just gonna use this one that I always use. And then you just click import. It'll put it in, you click import again, and there you go. So now all we have to do is go to our button. Then we'll find the pixel one. And so we're just gonna call, call this our pause button. So now we have a pause button here. And then if you see in the game, um, it's just kind of here. You can click it and it'll turn slightly darker but you can make this look a lot better because Unity has its own built-in button tools. Like you can make it sprite, do a sprite swap, an animation, tint the color, anything when you click the button. So what we'll do here is we'll give it a darker color from when it's highlighted and being pressed. And then turn the alpha when it's not being pressed to zero. And then to like 20. It's like, so you'll see it'll work like this. You'll see it'll go like that. Oh wait, so it does that because you put, it has navigation to automatic. You want to turn that to none. And we'll just keep this white and we'll make the button slightly bigger to two and then there. So now you can see that it will kind of highlight and when you select it. And when you click it, it'll turn slightly brighter. So that's now, excellent. Yeah, now we have these, this button, and we'll call this just, you can call it uh, pause, pause button. And then we'll just go duplicate and make another one up here and call this resume. Uh, what you would, what else, what you would normally do is you do 
a one pause button that when when it's paused it'll just say resume but for now we'll just do this and so now we have our two buttons our pause and resume button and we want to make these actually do something so you can see right here on click uh, list is empty you'll have to add something here but we have to drag in a script or something for it to use so we'll have to make a script so we're going to create an empty object an empty object is just an object that doesn't do anything. It's just here. It has a transform, and you can add scripts to it. We're just going to call this our time manager. So when you pause the game, you're setting the time. You're making it so the time stops, pretty much. So here's our time manager. We're just going to give him time management as his script. And we'll add that and wait a second. And now we can open this. And so this time, instead of using, we'll do a new thing. We'll do we'll do void, we'll public void, public void pause. So how this works is that a void function, if I do a public void like this, I can what I can do is I'll be able to drag this. Uh, sprite I mean the script into here and clicking a button I can call that function to use it so I can call the script from anywhere so, so Simon, could, would you mind showing us again the steps that you took from the sort of the main screen in unity to get you to um, this screen here okay yeah so what I do is I just go to the script right here you'll see or down here, you can right click it, then you'll click open, and it'll just open up in normally Visual Studios. There's another one that you have, but the, this program will be pre-installed with Unity. So what we'll do is we'll get, to make it pause, we'll do uh, something time dot, time dot time scale, and then, equals zero. So when it pauses, time stops. And we'll make a new public void and we'll call it resume. So do the time dot time scale is one. The public void here is just another way of like you're you're defining something. So when we call yeah. on pause or resume, which are the buttons that you're doing, right? It's gonna yeah. It's gonna just look for that command in the in the script, correct? Yes. So now we'll be able to use, let's say, our pause button. We'll drag in the time manager and go to time management, which is our script, and go pause. And then for resume, we'll go time manager, time management, resume. So now you can see that. I'll be able to click pause and it'll stop rising, resume, it'll continue. So that's, that's fantastic. It's amazing how the simplest code and you're able to just do this. Um, so those commands that you were typing in the script, that, yeah. are they recognizable commands or they're just something that you, you defined? Uh, the pause yeah. and resume? Yeah, the pause and resume I defined by, those are just the names I used here. I can change these to whatever I want. And so you have to make your own commands for it to use. Right. So the time scale there is, is a recognize, that's actually a command that Unity recognizes. Yeah. yeah. That's in the Unity dot Unity engine thing. And then there are also things like you can do using Unity engine dot um scene management and that so you can put that if you wanted you could put that in and so this is all one scene if you can see right here it's called it's just called sample scene um it's just this and how levels and stuff work is i would go create and then make a new scene we'll just call this uh, let's say it's level two of our game or project, you would go here, it's completely empty. So 
um, if you were using scene management, you can call through script to change scenes and stuff like that. Um, can you link the level one and level two like to be a continuous scene? Yeah, how you would, yeah, you can do that. And you don't need to even make multiple scenes. It's just better for, or, for organizing levels and stuff a lot of the time. So I just want to try something. Make this really long collider. Make it fall, hopefully. No, it doesn't want to fall. I got to turn it a little bit. There. So now this will f this tower is gonna fall on the weather balloon. Balloon. No, don't do it. <laughs> but I noticed there that the camera, the camera moved as the as the pillar was actually pushing the balloon off. Oh, I moved it. I was moving it. Oh, okay. With the arrows that we put in. That's pretty neat. Yeah. So, so you can see it fall in here. Recap, Seaborn, what we've done so far here, we've created basically the ground mm -hmm. and the objects and all the objects having the Collider 2D ability, yeah. which gives it physics, correct? Yeah. And then we've, you've created some script to tell it to, to rise. Well, actually, yeah. you adjusted the physics of those objects so that enables it to rise. That's negative gravity. Mm -hmm. And then um, you've adjusted the camera so that it's actually following the object as it moves. Yes. And, and what else? Oh, the pause and resume function. Yeah. Great. So I'm just going to build a little tower here. And then it's fun to just play around and like knock over towers and stuff in this because <laughs> the physics are really fun to mess with. Unfortunately, you can't. I I, I know the helium uh, the balloon probably works off helium or something. That's right. And you can't really mess with. You can't give stuff negative mass here, which. To make it more realistic, helium -y, helium y, I guess. You can just make the gravity invert. And then it also, we could also like to make this more realistic, we could get the actual, this is measured, measured in meters. So this would be, this is a 10 by 10 meter balloon we have here. We could get the realistic uh, actual uh, scale of it and the actual, the real mass of it and take the friction, stuff like that, to make it the most realistic as possible. Well, as realistic as possible. If we wanted to, which I, I assume we'd want to. Yes. For a weather balloon simulation to make it as real as possible. Just wanna see this. <laughs> Actually, oh, okay, so what happens here is that this is not, the balloon is heavier than this because I never actually changed its mass. So we'll just use auto mass and this thing is gonna be really heavy now. And I wonder if, can you make that circle of the balloon, can you make it um, expand? Yes. Or burst, you can make it expand. Yeah, you can. So for that, um, I'm just gonna go to, I'll have to make a new script. We'll just go to our balloon and then go to, let's see, we'll just do expand balloon, we'll call it. And then we'll take that and we can just go, I think it's transform.scale. Oh, 
oh wait we need a void update uh void update we'll go transform dot scale how do you do this it's like let me just check okay so transform dot scale plus equals new vector to uh i don't know can you just do like i'm forgetting what am i, what am I thinking of it's just do transform dot scale uh what would you call like the level of expansion like how fast is it expansion expansion yeah. speed yeah expansion speed yeah and i'm just wondering if you could put a formula in there that's i know that it, you can't really do pressure mm -hmm. changes but you could certainly put an adjustment on the change in pressure based on the altitude yeah yeah you could definitely make this work at the same as the uh with the altitude you could do um it'd be like transform dot scale plus equals transform dot y divided by something to make it a uh, more realistic right expansion speed yeah we'll just do Just copy this. No, I'm not sure that this is going to work because I haven't used scale that much. So I'm not sure if I'm using the right script, but it should work. Scale, OK. Let me just see. I had it written down in here. Um, and you could you could import code here from if you if you wanted to from time management and the camera control, right? If yeah. You, sections of it you could call on code in in those separate files to bring in and use in this particular setting. Correct. Yes. Um, so it is transform dot local scale, I think. And I notice it uses camel case a lot. Yeah. And normally you won't have to type all this, but like you can just press tab and it'll auto fill for you. But it doesn't really want to for me. It doesn't want to do that on this computer. So I don't know what its problem is. Um, it says I have. Well, transform we, can, um, we can sit on, on this conundrum and maybe uh, work on this overnight because we are going yeah. to um, come back tomorrow at 11 and continue to work on this. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. What probably happened was I wasn't using a vector three. I was using a vector two. Vector two. Yeah. Do you want to try it? Go ahead. Change it to vector three. Yeah. That norm. Oh no, it's oh, because I did local extra. scale dot. Yeah. You got yeah. That's two. probably what it is. Yeah, normally it should fill this for you. I don't, what? Maybe you have to do three, back to three and then include Yeah, it. I guess. Let's try that. Um, oh, okay. No, I know what it was. It was an equals, not a plus equals. And then... Plus for all these, and hopefully that should work. Oh yeah. Oh wait, we never gave it an expansion speed. Oh, there you go. There, so there's an expansion speed that you can see, and it will expand. Oh, oh yes, it will expand. Yes, sir. <laughs> and the the collider, I don't think expands. Oh no, it does actually. It does expand with it, so yeah, that's pretty cool. That that is actually really really cool. And so then, from here, what you could do 
um, and maybe this is something to think about, is that can you give the balloon, in this case, the circle, a property, right? Can you give it a maximum scaling size? So if you said like, if, you know, because in nature, these things are made of rubber, basically. So, yeah. but there's a point because the gas is expanding, putting pressure on the inside of the balloon and eventually it's going to burst, right? And yeah. I'll post a picture of what it looks like when it bursts up in the stratosphere. So you probably want to add something that says, if the scale is this size, right? Then yeah. it causes it to burst. Maybe that's something for tomorrow that we could work yeah. on. Yeah. So I, I'd say if transform.local scale is um is less than this size keep growing and then if it does i'll just delete the balloon and i can add in an animation later yes that's that's excellent yeah. well seaborn cool stuff yeah thank you um i'm i'm really yeah. looking forward to seeing how this turns out and um yeah i can't wait to continue working on this yeah thank okay. you thanks for getting us started on this project yeah cool well uh i think it is about an hour so i'm going to um thank you again and say goodbye and just yeah. remind everyone that we'll be back tomorrow at 11 o'clock 11 okay. o'clock wednesdays for some unity coding with Seabon. thanks again Seabon. good thank stuff thank you thanks for letting me do this um yeah bye